Did you get all you need? Yeah, I'm loading up my mags now. Cool, Bradley. So I got a question for you. Do you have a religious background? No, actually. I stopped going to church a while back. Well, that would that would make it a background, right? You, what you did before. Oh, yeah, sorry. That's okay. My family what church? wasn't really religious, but my brother's side of the family, uh, like my brother's grandparents were very religious. This is your younger brother? Yes. Okay. So your brother's... We've sort of broken away from them because his, mo his grandmother's gotten a little crazy in the head. Uh-oh. What happened? Oh, she's just really paranoid about the family now because her uh, son has had uh, had a past with uh, stealing and whatnot. But now oh, he has a that. grand, or now he has a little girl, so he's no longer doing that stuff. The most he goes into is weed. That's it. Okay then. So and he's been trying to get his life back together. Well, that's she's good. always yelling at him and blaming him for stuff. Oh, that's too bad. So with your with a little bit of background you have. Um, what do you think happens when we die? It honestly depends on what most people would think. As some people, they say there's heaven. The one time I've actually been out and under, all I saw was black. Okay. Just well, you don't, you don't actually get to go to what's ever next until you actually die. So seeing you're still here, that means you haven't died yet. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, uh -oh. um, hold on. I got to relog. What's wrong? Oh, no. It's not letting me load the gun now. Yay. Um, you might be. Are you sure you got the right mag and ammo and everything? Yep. I've there's got a two car, M91 mags. A car which is weird because it's. Yeah, which is weird because I had another mag already inside of it. No worries. And then we just pulled two magazines out of the, uh, thank you, Jay. Tent. So, I'm curious, Bradley. Sorry, I didn't mean to close that on it. It's okay. It was just kind of funny. I'm like standing there talking to Bradley. I'm like, hey, where'd he go? He turned all black. <laughs> I know, I know. I was like, oh, no. Yeah. So, have you have you had any uh, opportunity to read any of the Bible at all, Bradley? Not for a long time. Not for, what's a long time? Like years and years and years? Oh, yeah. At least a decade. Oh, wow. Okay. So, have you ever heard of something called the gospel? Oh, yeah. Okay, well, do you know what the gospel means? I have definitely heard that. No, actually. So, you've heard the word, but you don't know what it means. It's been a long time, so the gotcha. meaning's kind of dropped out of my mind. Gotcha. Well, the gospel is actually a very simple word. It just means good news. Does that make sense? Ah, yes. So it's the good news, and then the question is, well, if, that's, if there's good news, what's the bad news? So have you ever heard of um, what is coming after it's allotted once for men to die, and then the judgment? Have you ever heard about that? Uh, no. No, okay. So the idea is um, we are going to be judged based upon what we've done here by God after we die. Have you ever heard that before? Yes. Okay. How do you think you're going to do? You're going, you're going to heaven or you're going to go to hell? What do you think? I don't know yet. I've honestly been not the best boy in all my life. Okay. Well, do you, do you know, there's a quick test you can take to evaluate. It's called the good person test. Would it be okay if I asked you a couple questions? Sure. I promise it's not painful. At least, you know, not in terms of physical. Let me switch my <laughs> Mosin to my left side. Okay. So, in your life, how many lies do you think you've told? Way too many. Way too many. Okay. What do you call someone who's told way too many lies? A liar. Exactly. Have you ever stolen anything? Once or twice, yes. Okay, what do you call somebody who steals things? Stealer or a thief. A thief, exactly. Uh, have you ever used God's name in vain? 
Yes, multiple times. Okay. That's using the name of the creator who gave you life and gave you the eyes to see this amazing world and play this cool game um, as a cuss word. So very serious in Old Testament days. They actually used to stone people to death for that. So pretty glad we don't live in Old Testament days. I would have been stoned to death several times over. So I mean, we have stones here. How do I know you're not going to stone me now? <laughs> uh, I'm not. I'm not an Old Testament kind of guy. I'm New Testament. I'm New Testament. So last question. Are you and I, shoot me? <laughs> no, last question. And I appreciate your honesty. You know that uh, the Bible says you shouldn't commit adultery, but Jesus said even if you yeah. look at a woman with lust, you've committed adultery in your heart. Have you ever looked at another person with lust? Well, yes. Okay. Well, I've I got have a very bad thing for redheads. Gotcha. So <laughs> I've got, I've got some bad news for you. Um, you're not a good oh, person no. and you're just like the rest of us. And if today was the day that you died and you stood in front of God and he judged you based on everything you've ever done in your whole life, everything you've ever said, and everything you've ever thought, knowing that this is God and he basically knows everything, all the secret sins of your heart that we obviously don't need to talk about, but he knows them all. Would this good and righteous God find you innocent or would he find you guilty of breaking his laws? Possibly innocent, actually, because I've repented on many of my ways. Well, think about how that Six works. Six years ago, my mindset would have been completely different. Well, that's good. But let's think about this because that's not going to help you in a court of law. Let's say you're standing before a judge and the judge says, well, um, you've confessed to all of these, uh, these laws that you've broken. And I'm about to ca uh, um, cast judgment or sentence on you. And you say, wait, judge, I feel really bad about it. I shouldn't have done it. That's repenting, right? And the judge is going to go... So what? Yeah. yeah, you should feel bad about it. It doesn't change the fact that there's a pen penalty for your actions. Does that make sense? Yeah. So standing in front of God, he is a perfect judge. He will do everything perfectly, including judging us based upon our actions and our deeds and the things we've said and things that are in our heart. All of this means that he is going to find us very guilty when we stand before him. Does that make sense? Yep. You're making it really hard to talk to you, by the way, because your your movements are very erratic. Are you doing that on purpose? Yeah, uh, uh, both my rifles are stuck on the ground. Gotcha. Okay. So understanding that God would find you guilty for what you've done, should he, as a good and righteous judge, send you to heaven, or should he send you to hell? He'd most likely send me to hell. He'd most definitely send you to hell. So now you know the truth. No more need for you to be in doubt. If today was the day that you died and God gave you justice, he would in fact send you to hell. Okay, do you feel better now that we've got that, uh, yeah. that um, taken off of no doubt about it? Yeah. You know what's going to happen? Yes. You don't feel good about it. Nobody wants to go to hell, dude. It's a terrible <laughs> thing. Come on now. This has got to concern you. I've accepted my fate. <laughs> dude come on the worst I thing know that, what i've done the worst thing that i can imagine about hell is it's going to be forever i mean even if something's terribly oh, yeah. terrible 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 but it's going to have an end hell's never going to end it literally takes eternity to pay off one sin just one and we've done like you said thousands of them that makes we've sense locked in. no we haven't <laughs> can't lock a tent I'm so, uh, uh, nothing's working for me now. Well, hold off, it's, oh, then, then don't worry about it, and let's, let's finish our conversation, because if you understand the precariousness of your situation, it has to concern you, doesn't it, Bradley? Yes. Okay, that is the bad news. All of us deserve hell, me included. That's why the gospel is so amazing. Because it's the good news about how a God who is full of wrath, who is perfect in his judgment, and who we deserve to be thrown in hell by, is also full of mercy and full of grace. And he has made a way 
for guilty sinners like you and I to be forgiven of our sins. 2,000 years ago, he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to be born miraculously of a virgin. He lived a perfect life. He never lied. He never stole. He never blasphemed God. He never looked with lust. He never broke any of God's commands. In fact, he did everything perfect, everything that was pleasing to his father. And then he went to something called the cross as an innocent man. And while he was on that cross, God actually poured out his wrath on him for your sins, for my sins, for the sins of the whole world. And right before Jesus Christ died on that cross, he said something. Three words right before he died. Do you have any idea what it was? Can you hear me? Yeah. I'm okay. here now. Sorry. Uh, okay. I can't do anything. I can't even drink anything, and my water's going down very fast. All right. Well, I'll give you some water. Here, I got so, you. I got you. I got, you got, I got, got some water for him? All right. Thank you. So, right before Jesus Christ the, died, uh, he said three things, three words. Do you have any idea what they were? No, I do not. It is finished. It's a rather strange thing for somebody to say who's dying on a cross. It is finished. What he was saying is your debt has been paid. 100%. Just let me know when you're good. He you should be good now. I I'm gave good. him half of my canteen too. Your debt has been paid completely. 100%. For every sin you've ever done and every sin you ever will do. And then he died. And if he had a stayed dead, you and I would have no hope. But are you aware of what happened three days after he was put into the tomb? He was uh, revived. Not revived, because that would make it sound like he passed out and they revived him with a little Res resuscitation. Uh, resurrected. He came back from the dead. That's what I meant. Yeah, he was dead in the tomb for three days, and he came back from the dead. That proved that he was who he said he was. God himself. And more importantly, that he could do what he said he did, which was pay for our sins on that cross. He said, it is finished. And he backs that up because he's God himself. He was seen by his apostles. He was seen by 500 witnesses over the course of 40 days. And then he ascended into heaven. And right now he is seated at the right hand of the father. And Bradley, he makes you an offer. He wants to make you a trade. He says, give me your sin debt that you owe and I'm going to give you that perfect, righteous life that I led. Jesus wants to exchange your sin for his righteousness. So that on the day that you die and you stand before God, you're not just seen as a guilty sinner who deserves hell. You're not just seen as a forgiven sinner who basically doesn't, but doesn't deserve anything else. You're actually seen as the very righteousness of Jesus Christ himself. You can be welcomed into heaven as a son of the living God. Have you heard this good news before? Bradley? Sorry, yes. So do you understand that legal implication? If you're in court and you're found guilty and the judge says you owe a million dollars and you're like, judge, I can't pay that. The judge says, well, I'm going to have to throw you in jail. Somebody walks in and plops down a million dollars on the counter and pays that debt for you. The judge can legally dismiss your case because your debt has been paid. And that's what Jesus Christ did on the cross. He paid your debt so your case can be dismissed. Does that make sense? Yes. So now the question is, is what I'm telling you the truth or do you think this is a lie? No, I think it's the truth. Okay. Well, Jesus Christ makes it very clear. There's two things that you have to do to accept this free gift he's, he's offering you. See, it's free. There's nothing you can do to earn it. He says, repent. And that's to turn from your sins and turn to God. Forsaking your sins, turning him, admitting, you're right, I'm wrong, I deserve hell. But then you put your faith 
and trust in Jesus Christ, that he did what he said he did, that you are in fact forgiven for your sins. The day that you do that, repent and put your faith and trust in Christ, you will pass from death to life. You'll be indwelt by the very spirit of God himself and you will become a child living God. You'll be a Christian. That's what happened to me seven years ago. I repented and put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ, knowing that he has paid for my sins. I am forgiven and I became a follower of Jesus Christ. That's what being a Christian is. So understanding that this is the truth and all you have to do is repent and put your faith and trust in him. When Bradley, are you going to do as he commands you and repent this day and put your faith and trust in him? When are you going to do that? I have no clue. Okay. Well, the next question I have for you is when do you think you're going to die? Like the day and the minute. About three years from now. Three years from now. You know that for a fact. I've got a pretty good idea. You're cheeky. Nobody knows for a fact. You don't even know if you have the end of today. We don't know when we're going to die. It could be any moment. This is the only moment we're promised today. Tomorrow is not a promise. Right now we have this moment. The reason why I bring this up is there's an urgency to this. Jesus says today is the day of salvation. You don't know if you have tomorrow. So this is something you should seriously think about. Do you understand that urgency? Yes. Bradley, this is a gift for me to be able to share with you this good news. And that's all I can do. I can share it with you. I can answer any questions you have, but that's all I can do. I am a proclaimer of this good news. Somebody shared it with me and God gives me the blessing to share it with you. He loves you a lot, Bradley. He sent me into a video game, set up this divine appointment just so that you would hear this good news. But after that, it's between you and him. I, th I hope that you will consider these things. Do you have access to a Bible? No, not at the moment. Okay, I have an online link for the book of John that I'll send you. I hope you might consider reading it about this truth. The very words of God himself will explain what he's done and this free gift he offers you. Would you, would you do that? Would you read the book of John if I sent you the link? When I get to it, yes. Okay. Well, I hope you might make some time for it. So James is here with us. Would it be okay, Bradley, if we prayed with you? Sure. Um, real quick, there's somebody who's just outside. It's okay. They'll wait. They're hiding in the bush. It's all right. We have people who uh, come and they want to listen. So, <clears throat> James, would you uh, would you pray for Bradley? Heavenly Father, we lift you up tonight, Lord God, and we thank you. We we thank you for the opportunity, Lord God, to to talk to Bradley. Lord, you know his heart, you know his mind. And Lord God, we just pray that you open him, open his mind and heart, Lord God, to the truth. Hey, you got a that it is an immediate and a necessary thing to, to repent and turn to you. And begin to follow you, Lord God. We just ask you to, to guide him hey, in that, uh, Lord God. And some food by chance? That your will, Lord God, in his life be done. Lord God, we just thank you for the opportunity, Lord God, to be here tonight and to speak with him. Lord God, we just thank you for what you're going to do in his life. And Lord God, we pray tonight all things in the name of your son, in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Bradley, this is why we're here. We're, uh, we're missionaries to gamers. And if you have any questions or we can do anything, I hope you'll uh, reach out to us. I want you to know that myself and James and many other brothers in Christ are going to be praying for you. So I hope you'll think about these things. And I really appreciate your patience and understanding as we talked about it. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much.